most important asset we all have is our time. And uh, you're here today, right? You're taking up your time. Time is money, okay? So what I'm going to try to do is just give you three, I, the three, three themes that I relied on to develop the business I developed. And, uh, you know, the first one um, is compassion. You know, how do you develop compassion? Now, I had a problem is I couldn't read. I graduated high school on a fourth grade reading level. Um, I would look in a dictionary one day and I asked my father what the end meant at the end of a word because I didn't know what it meant to noun. And so I, I was pushed through school because I was such a problem. And I had a speech impediment. I, I had a, a, I was always anxious. I was always moving around, uh, dyslexic. I put numbers backwards and everything. So I was really not very good in school at all. So the thing that really had a big impression on me is, is a book called The Family of Man, because it is, it was pictures, it was 580 pictures of, uh, of uh, different people around the world. And because I couldn't read, this book had a great influence on my desire to, you know, to become a compassionate person. Because what I did is I went and I bought a camera. I bought the first single reflex camera in 1965-66, and I kept it in my plumbing truck. And wherever I went in Bridgeport, I would take my camera and I would take pictures of people, you know? And I think that discipline of working through the camera lens, looking for people or their problems, their happiness, I really developed my compassion by taking those pictures. The other thing that really helped me, you know, was really my father. My, my, you know, you know, you don't pick your father, you don't pick your mother. You're stuck, you know, one way or another. Okay? Okay? You know, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but my father was just a very compassionate person. Uh, and the story that he told me that I always carried out throughout my life is that he was working in Tennessee as a plumber during World War II. He was working on the plant where they were building the nuclear energy in Tennessee. He was a plumber. Um, and every day they would take a bus that went for about five miles out to where the factory is and then five miles back. Okay? And, and one day um, uh, they were coming back, you know, it's the end of the day, it was August, and a, and a black man went to get on the bus and some white guy from Tennessee kicked him off the bus. He says, you walk. Okay? And my father says that had, that put such a pit in his stomach that he couldn't eat that day, and he never got that feeling out of him. And I always have this image of my dad um, uh, uh, in a bus, with a handsome black hair, driving a school bus with a dust, and a black man standing there having to walk five miles. Okay, so th so that little story had a tremendous input input on on me. Uh, but most of the things that I learned, I learned as a plumber. And I built my business from being a plumber. Um, service is the, first you have compassion, then you have to understand service, okay? What it means to service other people. And I, I really learned that at Mrs. Monroe's house. Mrs. Monroe was a, a mother that was on welfare in Bridgeport. And uh, I always remember going to the house. It was a gray house, it had a black door, a screen door and uh, no uh, uh, no glass in the screen door. I knock on the door. Mrs. Monroe opened the door, and she had three beautiful little boys, uh, all in white little shorts, and they were crying their eyes out because they couldn't use the bathroom. They couldn't use the toilet bowl. Okay, so I I I I went there and I'm cleaning out the toilet bowl like you know like this with an auger. And as I'm doing it, Mrs. Monroe is hanging on my arm, saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> and I'm looking at her as, you know, as I, but she was so grateful that I would go there and clean out her tar post so her kids can use uh, the bathroom. And I realized at that moment that uh, being of service to others is really the number one, one of your number one columns in building any business. You're there to service other people. And, uh, and I and I and I always remember Mrs. Monroe because that's where the seed was planted that you can have a very wonderful, successful life if you're dedicated to service of other people. 
1990, worst year of my life. 1990, I woke up one day and I owed the bank 62 and a half million personally. I owed vendors about seven million, like plumbers and carpenters and, and lawyers and, and architects. Uh, I had 365,000 square feet of empty space. And my real estate, and I was, I was losing 500,000 a month in cash, and my real estate was 50% underwater. In other words, if I owed uh, 10 million on a building, it wasn't worth 5 million. So that's the hole I was in. And I, I like to say that there's only two things that God doesn't know. God doesn't know what Jesuits are thinking or how I got out of that hole in 1990. <laughs> also, as a plumber, so we have compassion, we have service, and also as a plumber, I was called out to replace a boiler in um, East Main Street. And it was an October day, and, the, um, and, and, and it used to be a time where what these people used to do is they used to take coal fire boilers and put an oil burner in it, okay? And um, so it was leaking and I told the lady I had to replace it. And so, she's, so uh, she says, can you do it? I said, yes, I can do it right now for you. And I went around and I counted the radiators because if you count the radiators, the height of the radiators, you know how much heat you have to buy. So I, I would call Lipnick Plumbing Supply, Murray Lipnick, and I said, Murray, uh, please come out and, uh, and send someone after lunch and bring a boiler, 300,000 BTUs, whatever it was. And I went down there and I took out the boiler by myself. And the way I did it was that I took two hammers, and if you, if you hit the fitting at the same time, two five-pound hammers, the fitting would pop so you could save the, the threads. You could make the job easier for yourself. I broke up the whole boiler, uh, got a garbage can, took everything out. There was that much black coal on the boiler. So I got it all done by lunch, and I'm sitting on the steps looking down into the, the, into the basement. Now, you, you imagine... You know, the, the, those doors that open up where you used to walk down into the basement, so you got that image. And I was sitting there, and every day I had the same sandwich. I had uh, two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, an apple, and a thermos of cold water. I mean, I, I only made 93.50 a week working for my father for five years. So I never had, you know, I never had any money when I was growing up. And as I was eating the sandwich, I had to take the wax paper, I had to take it with my teeth, and open up the wax because my hands, I was so black, my hands, I didn't want to touch the food. And as I, as, as I was sitting there, the sweat was just pouring off my face and onto my arms. And you could see the sweat running down like a zebra looking, okay? That's what I looked at. And I looked down into that furnace, into that basement. And I said, I've got to use my imagination. I've got to do something different with my life, okay? I can't do this any longer. Okay? I got to do something different. You know, and that's a key item in a business career, your imagination. You know? And with your imagination, you can image yourself as a better person, become a better person, a better father, become a better father. You know, cry, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas says, see what you are, become what you see. See what you are, become what you see. He means by that is that you are in the image of Christ, become Christ-like. Do Christ-like work. Be a good person. Image yourself as a good person. In the real estate business, you really have to really think on your feet, you know? And you have to know the five F's in business. The five F's, you know? You gotta have fun, you gotta be friendly, you gotta be fast, you gotta be focused, and you gotta be flexible. Those are your five F's, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you.